If you've watched a few of my videos now, you'll have heard me talk about a fair dismissal and unfair dismissal. What do we really mean by that? Fair, of course, is in the eyes of the law, not necessarily morally fair. The two things may well be very different things. So in this video, I'm gonna outline the five fair reasons for a dismissal. Hello, my name is Jennifer, I'm the founder of Silk Helix and we provide training and HR advice for business owners and people managers. So let's dive right into these five fair reasons. Remember when I'm talking fair, I'm talking in the eyes of the law, so this is the reasons that you can use for a dismissal. They're the only reasons that you can use for a dismissal in order for it to be a fair dismissal. Once somebody has got to two years of service, under two years of service, things are slightly different because you can't bring an ordinary unfair dismissal claim without two years service. You can, however, bring claims around automatic unfair dismissal, which I'm not gonna go into in this video. So I'm not really gonna try and difference between two years and, and over. But I just wanted to highlight that it's there and make sure that we're really clear that these five fair reasons for dismissal, we're talking about the reasons that you have to give, the reason the dismissal has to fall under one of these categories once somebody gets to two years of service in order for it to be a fair dismissal. So let's start with the first one, which is conduct. Conduct is a dismissal where somebody has behavior has fallen below what is expected or breached a policy or a procedure, generally it's not going to be a dismissal in the first instance. Really we should be going up levels of warnings in most situations, so we might give them a written warning, a final written warning. There will be situations however though where conduct is gross misconduct and therefore it is a dismissal in the first instance and that would be a dismissal without notice. Absolutely crucial for these dismissals is to have all your policies in place so that people are really clear on the rules because if they're clear on the rules, A, they shouldn't break them in the first place, they're much less likely to, and B, you've got solid ground with which to dismiss if you need to if somebody breaks your rules because you've been really clear about what they were and what the consequences would be. The second one is capability. Capability is where somebody's capability falls below what's expected despite the fact that they've had training, the, all the relevant um, resources, equipment is given to them so they've got all of the right environment in which they could perform but they're not. Whether that is or performance or real health both fall under this capability category and capability situations again we don't normally dismiss in the first instance we would normally work with somebody try and ensure they've had all the right training that we've got the right resources in place that we've looked at reasonable adjustments all of that stuff before we get to a dismissal but capability is our second reason that we could dismiss somebody Third one is redundancy, and this is where the role no longer exists. Either no longer exists in the place it used to, so maybe you're moving the offices in such a way that it's not reasonable for somebody to get to a new place. Maybe there's a reduction in workloads. Maybe that's because you've had reduced orders coming in or more efficient ways of working could reduce workload. So again, redundancy has got its own processes in order for it to be a fair dismissal, but redundancy is one of the reasons with which we can dismiss people. Forgive the quick interruptions to this video and I will keep it really quick. If you've liked this video, found it useful, you can of course hit the subscribe button, but I also want to tell you about our digital courses. In our digital courses, I go into much more detail. Videos are very similar to these. It's me, it's on camera, but there's also downloads, there's sample forms, there's a few sample policies in there as well. All the things that you need to know. We've even got some coming where we've got live classes as well. So check out our digital courses. Details are on screen now and in the description below. Look forward to seeing you on one of our courses in the future. And in the meantime, I'll let you get back to the video. The fourth one is statutory restrictions. So this might be, for example, a driver who loses their driving license, somebody who loses the right to work in the UK would be a reason for dismissal. So anyone that we can't legally employ in the job any longer will come under this category. We can dismiss them for those reasons. And the fifth one, some other substantial reason. Now, this one is not a catch-all in that we can just bung anything in there and dismiss for any reason. The keyword here is substantial. So it's where you've got a reason for dismissal that just does not fit under one of those categories, but you can't continue to employ this person. It could be something like a complete breakdown in trust and confidence. It could be a conflict of interest, say they've taken up another role or even a family member has, occasionally that might come into here. It could be that there's been a breakdown in working relationships that are literally personality clashes. It's not bullying, it's not harassment, it's not something we can deal with there, but it's something's just got to give. 
really crucially, it has to be substantial. We don't deal with these very often for that reason, but there are times where we need this category. We need that, it, it is a substantial reason or substantial business reason to change something where let's say the work still exists, but at different times of the day, it's not a redundancy. It might fall under some other substantial reason occasionally. It depends, really does depend on the circumstances. So bear in mind, I'm giving some really like high level stuff here. If you are dismissing, I would always recommend that you take advice to avoid any unfair dismissal claims. Don't forget, just because you've got the right reason for dismissal doesn't automatically make that dismissal fair. There's still a procedure that you need to follow to make sure that it's still a fair dismissal. Redundancy, for example, it may well be a redundancy. You may have solid business reasons for it being a redundancy, but if you've not done reasonable consultation, if you've not looked at alternative employment, then you're still likely to find yourself in a situation where somebody can claim unfair dismissal. So do bear in mind it's the reason, but also following the right process, making sure that you've done everything you can to avoid that dismissal, that's what we're aiming to do. And that when we do dismiss, we have followed the right procedures and that includes giving the right of appeal always give the right of appeal when you've dismissed somebody. Absolutely crucial for a fair dismissal is to make sure that there is a right of appeal and that somebody can appeal to someone who actually could overturn the decision. There are times where those decision makers get it wrong and we need to make sure that we've got the appeal there so we can correct things and always better to correct at that stage than it is to end up in an employment tribunal. So there you have it, there are five fair reasons for a dismissal. Make sure that if you are dismissing, it falls within those and you followed the correct procedures, you don't wanna end up in an employment tribunal. Hints, tips on this channel all the time with new videos coming out every week. So do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and don't forget to check out our trainings too.